Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha, it's Condo Insider time, Thursday, three o'clock. I think we started a couple minutes late today, but we were having a vibrant discussion about one of our programs provided by the Honolulu Police Department called the Honolulu Citizens Police Academy. Go online, check it out, but it's a 13 week course for the public about the challenges of being a police officer. And I send out my greatest respect for our men in blue and the other first responders because I can tell you I'm in my 11th or 12th week now of doing this course, and I can tell you they have a very tough job. So uh, thanks to our first responders. And then we have our second responder here, Nalan, the attorney who is well known in our industry and an expert on everything, uh, except maybe the Honolulu Citizens Police Academy. We'll, we'll get you there. And uh, we wanna talk about condo cannabis. That's the issue of marijuana in condos. And I would tell you to start this show, when it gets down to people's rights, nothing is simple. There are so many ifs and buts, ors and ors and complexities. We'll do our best job to give you a balanced perspective of condo cannabis. But welcome back, always good to see you. Give me a little one minute summary of who you are so those, those who haven't seen the show before know more about you. Aloha everyone, my name is Nalan. Uh, always a pleasure to be back. Uh, I'm attorney with the law firm Damon Keelion Kupchak Castard. I practice condominium law and immigration law. Our firm offers full services to condominium associations, uh, community associations, co-ops in Hawaii. Uh, always a pleasure to talk about the condo issues, about you know how people live in condo projects, you know, more smoothly and happily. Well, before we get into the nitty gritty of the cannabis law and condos, you and I are having a little discussion and beforehand mm -hmm. that, as if I'm, if I'm correct on this, we have a state law that allows use of medical marijuana under certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. The federal law does not allow that. Correct. And so mm -hmm. we were talking about the issue of whether an immigrant here in Hawaii could get a medical marijuana card, whether it would be valid because they're not a state citizen. What's your thoughts? Yeah, so if, uh, if you're basically either a green card holder or holding a non-immigrant visa, you know, having gone through the naturalization process to become a U.S. citizen, then uh, because marijuana is still listed as a controlled substance under the federal law, it's illegal to use it in any way. So uh, it, even if you get, you know, under Hawaii law, you get the medical, you know, user card, you would still be running the risk of being subject to removal if you, uh, you know, use marijuana. So that, that's a very, um, I think it's an unfortunate issue because there are people there, especially like a children, they have, like, for example, seizure, they would need medical marijuana to treat their um, disease. And unfortunately, if they don't have the U.S. citizenship, uh, they probably cannot use it. Well, I guess this goes back to what I said. There's a lot of gray areas under this, and yeah. it's not so clear after all. But, you know, we talk about the law really talks about cannabis, not marijuana. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference? Why do we use the word cannabis as a term? They're basically the same thing. Uh, just because in 2017, uh, we passed a law basically uh, revising all the terms that we used before we used marijuana, but the new law basically says now from now on, we all use cannabis in place of marijuana. So basically they're the same thing. So the current law we have, can you briefly summarize what, I know there's gonna be some detailed discussion we're gonna have about condos and smoking right. and all that, but generally what does the current law say? So if you are a qualifying patient uh, and you have the medical need for uh, marijuana and if you comply with the registration requirement, then uh, you, uh, you're allowed to use marijuana uh, you know, with uh, adequate supply uh, and you will be having an affirmative uh, defense for uh, any prosecution regarding your usage of marijuana in Hawaii. Is it hard to get a medical marijuana card, do you think, or do you know? Or? If you have a legitimate need, I don't think it's going to be difficult because uh, you basically need the doctors uh, to provide the you know certification for you, and then you just go through a registration process with the state, and it's fairly you know um, 
if you have the instructions, it's not hard to do. I think the, the issue is you really need, you have to get the legitimate medical need instead of just for using for uh, recreational use purpose. But of course, in other states, uh, right now, I think at least in nine states plus DC, they allow recreational use of um, cannabis as well. But Hawaii, uh, as of now, we only allow medical use. Now, if a person had medical use from another state and they came here to Hawaii mm -hmm. on vacation, would they be able to buy from one of our local dispensaries? No, uh, because we don't have a reciprocity uh, policy here. You have to have a legitimate uh, you know, Hawaii card, which is called the 329 card, because the statutory uh, chapter 329 is regarding narcotics and includes a, uh, you know, a session regarding medical usage of marijuana. So, one thing that I think uh, I should ask you about is that when you have the card, I think you said the 329 card, mm -hmm. are you limited in quantities or, and, and there's an issue about having the actual plants themselves in your apartment. What are, what are the basic criteria there? Yeah, so you're only allowed an adequate supply, which is limited to, I think, um, 10 plants, the maximum, or four ounces. Uh, of course, you can, you know, there are still places you cannot use them. For example, you can't use it in a moving vehicle. You cannot use on the school grounds. Public park, no. Public beach, no. And any uh, common areas, you know, accessible to the public, you cannot use it there. I mean, but if it's, you know, you have the card, then you are allowed and, you know, to just the, you know, the limited to the adequate supply, you're, you're allowed to use it. And usage actually includes acquisition, cultivation, including growing. Uh, you know, on the card, usually there's also, a, a, will specify what are the location where your plants will be grown. So in a condo association, for example, the common areas, it would be illegal? Yes, for sure. And we'll get into the apartment and lanai's and things in a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, what's interesting, when I was taking this uh, Honolulu Citizens Police Academy, uh, we had a class on uh, illegal drugs, which goes beyond marijuana, it goes to all the opioids and all the rest of that stuff mm -hmm. you read so much about. But if I remember correctly, and, uh, and I have a bad memory out there, so don't always quote me, but um, my understanding is that if you had a problem, the, the police do get calls about people having marijuana, mm -hmm. and they will go there, and they will ask to see the medical marijuana card. Mm -hmm. And it's my belief that the plants they have have to be registered, they have to have a tag on them of some sort. And that if either A, they have more than 10 plants, mm -hmm. or B, there's not a tag on the plants, mm -hmm. they will confiscate them. And if they had 11 plants, they confiscate all 11 plants, not just the one excess plant. So uh, I think the people who use that substance and lawfully do so because they have a card, just ought to check out the rules and condo boards ought to be careful because people have rights if they have a medical card to uh, possession of a reasonable amount or a necessary amount or whatever term you use, uh, they're allowed to have that, which may include up to 10 plants based on our belief. Yeah, and because the law enforcement officer have access to all the registration data, you know, through Department of Health, it's a 24-hour basic inquiry based. If they make the inquiry, they will be able to get all the information uh, on your registration. So, Well, how about if you're a landlord and you say, I'm going to rent my unit out, I'm going to rent it out to John Smith. John Smith and John Doe get blamed for a lot of things, you know. <laughs> they have a very big, long rap sheet, particularly John Doe. I don't, I don't think I've known someone sued as many times as John Doe. <laughs> but, but, but the reality of it is, so I, I rent my unit to John Doe, and my rental agreement says, no smoking. Mm -hmm. Can I evict him or cancel the lease because he smokes marijuana legally under, the, under this 329 card? Yes, I mean, uh, basically the law is, uh, you have to give, uh, you know, equal treatment, no discrimination against, uh, you know, uh, medical marijuana smokers. Uh, if you have a no smoking policy or treating, you know, the cigarette smokers and the uh, medical marijuana smokers on equal footing, then you're okay to do that. But there is a wrinkle to that. Uh, that's because the, the fair housing law basically has a re reasonable, um, you know, accommodation requirement there 
for a disabled person, you need to afford them the opportunity, uh, you know, for equal usage and enjoyment of the housing. For so, for example, if you want to evict that tenant, and then the tenant turns around and said, you know, I'm a disabled person, I'm requesting for a reasonable accommodation uh, regarding this, then you have to jump through the hoops, uh, you know, on the reasonable accommodation for housing compliance with HCRC. Otherwise, you could be facing a a complaint, uh, you know, within you know HCRC's uh, jurisdiction. For those out there, HCRC stands for the Hawaii Civil Rights Commission, which Thank is you. the enforcement agency for all of this. But wouldn't I be able to say, as I, if I'm the landlord, in my example, mm -hmm. I'm not prohibiting him from using marijuana. He can certainly ingest it by edibles mm -hmm. or other methods. I'm just saying mm -hmm. no smoking because it's costly for me to clean the unit up after no smoking. Mm -hmm. That makes sense because uh, there are other ways to use uh, marijuana. You can do it by vaporizing or ingesting it or, you know, things like that. Yeah. yeah. And I think one of the complications and, and, uh, I, I was confiding with our producer here before the show that uh, I went to a military college, so uh, I've lived a very sterile life when it comes to artificial drugs, including marijuana. Um, so I'm not necessarily sure I'm the best person to understand all this, but you know, it seems to me that by saying edibles, and of course edibles aren't clearly available today in Hawaii in the sense that uh, I don't think they've been approved for distribution yet, maybe some have, but mm -hmm. they're probably much scarcer than the, the plant itself for smoking. So I guess that's another wrinkle on the reasonable accommodation issue. I'm not an expert on that, because I know, you know there are nine dispensaries in Hawaii already, but if you look at nationwide, uh, the trend is actually uh, towards legalizing marijuana. There was a poll down in 2017, it was like 61% are in favor of legalizing marijuana. Basically, right now, I think uh, you know most of the Western Coast, uh, nine states plus DC, allows every all kinds of usage, and then there's about 21 states allows medical marijuana usage, and then there's another portion of states that allow some lesser, you know, they, they allow to use the extract. So really, because it's a 6.6 .6 billion industry, every seven out of ten dollars is going to the medical usage and then the rest of the three out of ten is going to you know recreational use so we'll see in the future you know which direction we're heading in hawaii but there's been bills proposed before regarding workplace usage that was uh you know that didn't pass and uh, but for now i think uh, for schooling purpose parental rights housing you need to, uh, you know, be careful. Give, uh, you know, equal protection. Like, do not discriminate against the medical marijuana users. Okay, well, we're going to take a short break and come right back and talk about those people who use or smoke marijuana in the condo apartment and all the gray matter that's surrounding all of that. So, we'll be right back in one minute. Aloha. in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. You can be the greatest, you can be the best You can be the king, come banging on your chest You can beat the world, you can beat the war You can talk to God, go banging on his door You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock You can move a mountain, you can break rocks You can be a master, don't wait for luck Dedicate yourself and you can find yourself Welcome back to Condo Insider with Nan Lan, prominent local lawyer, talking about cannabis or marijuana in condos. We are talking about it in general terms, the law before the break, and we want to get into what do boards or associations do when they believe they have a person who is smoking marijuana and it's becoming a problem. 
I remind our viewers that they can always call our hotline at 808-374-2014 if they have a question. But let's clarify one thing on smoking. Mm -hmm. Did the law change regarding these electronic smoking devices? Yeah, there was a law passed earlier. Uh, basically, e-scrats, uh, they are also prohibited if there's a smoking ban. They're treated as the same as grass smoking. So now I have a condo, I'm on the board, I have neighbors calling me. I think the guy in Unit 101 is smoking grass and the smell's bothering me and and this is not right. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you say when you, uh, you're you bored and you hear that? So basically there are three steps you need to jump through the hoops. Uh, you know, the first one, of course, you have to verify whether uh, this uh, occupant is using marijuana for medical purpose. And you can basically ask the you know, user, you know, whether they possess uh, you know, the proper registration you know, card, the 329 card. Uh, and then after you verify that, then it really depends on whether your building is a no smoking building or not. Because we all know the laws already said uh, in common areas of the project, you cannot smoke, right? But the real problem lies within the individual units and you know, some, some projects, the Lanai's, because usually it's not clear whether the Lanai is um, considered you know, part of the unit or if it could be also considered like a limited common element I know there are uh, different opinions among attorneys as to, you know, uh, inside units, usually it's clear that if the association wants to ban smoking inside units, then you need a pass bylaws amendment, usually 67% ownership approval is required. Uh, sometimes as to lanai, certain attorneys consider that as limited common as are common elements, so that's prohibited. But there are also, you know, areas where if the lana is part of the units, then you still need the 67% ownership approval as well. And so, how about boards that say, well, I'm just going to make a house rule and prohibit marijuana or smoking in that, general? I mean, that, that's a risky approach, but, you know, of course, you have some theories like, uh, you know, nuisance. You know, if it's to a certain degree that's creating a nuisance at the project, then you have some basis there, but still, you know, you think about it, you know, common interest properties, private, you know, investment. When you bought this project, there's no such restriction. If it's a lifetime, you know, smoker, he invested in this project and this is his only home. If he's not allowed to smoke inside the unit, you are sort of taking, you know, um, a portion of his usage or enjoyment of his housing. So there were bills proposed before in the legislature trying to lower in the percentage required to pass, uh, you know, no smoking policies building-wise inside units, uh, th those were really contested and ultimately those bills didn't pass. So apparently this is, a, I think, a, is an issue subject to disputes. Do you have any view that if they pass legitimately mm -hmm. a bylaw amendment of 67% mm -hmm. to make it a non-smoking building, mm -hmm. are the existing smokers grandfather? Um, that's a good question, you know. Um, I think, you know, if, if the, it's a bylaw amendment, you know, I, unless, you know, the, the, the amendment has the grandfathering clause there, I don't think it will automatically have the grand, grandfathering, you know, if, impact there. I'm going to say this, but I don't remember the specific case, mm -hmm. but I do remember being told this, that there was actually a lawsuit on this matter. Mm -hmm. The judge ruled you buy in a condo. You live by the rules, you die by the rules. Mm -hmm. the, the bylaws provide that a supermajority, 67%, mm -hmm. can amend. And yes, you have to stop smoking. Yeah. And, uh, and that uh, the fact you're there already doesn't grandfather you with respect to uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the new rule adopted by the supermajority. But I'm sure as time goes on and lawsuits continue, They'll probably do new takes on that matter. So, so you have this thing. Uh, with, so you have this oh, big concern: the Hawaii Civil Rights Commission interfering with the Z labeled reasonable accommodation. What do I say to the lady who's pregnant? Says you're affecting the health of my unborn child, or the person that says I'm allergic to smoke, or I don't want secondhand smoke because mm -hmm. of all the health hazards. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that person? So definitely you need to do some balancing, you know, on case by case basis. This is why we're just sharing information here. We're not giving any substantive legal advice. If you have a specific matter, I think the best advice is to consult your attorney, you know, because uh, in every situation there are some, you know, different facts that could change the analysis. 
um, you know, of course, on the one hand, under fair housing, you have the you know obligation to provide reasonable accommodation for a disabled person if you know it's necessary for them to use marijuana for medical purpose. Uh, but we also know, you know, the examples you gave of perfect examples where we need to take those into consideration if. For the patient, there is another alternative way to use med medical marijuana and doesn't have to smoke it. For example, if he has this uh, closed universe vaporizing thing, he can just limit the, the stuff within his unit without, you know, the smoke uh, traveling everywhere. Or if he can install like a, a filter or like, you know, stuff to prevent the, you know, the, the smoke traveling out of his uh, unit, then maybe that's the right way to go, like sorting out like alternative solutions here. So the board can look at alternatives by saying, look, we want you to put in a vaporizing unit or a filter, or we want you, we're not telling you not to use marijuana, we're just mm -hmm. telling you not to smoke marijuana mm -hmm. because of the fact that it's having health consequences with other residents, mm -hmm. and try to find a balance or a common ground to make it work, mm -hmm. realizing oftentimes that doesn't work and you have to resort to uh, some other legal means, mm -hmm. arbitration, mediation maybe, to resolve the dispute. But I think boards can't just ignore it if you have a resident or an owner saying, you're affecting the health of my baby. I don't think mm -hmm. you can necessarily just ignore them. I think you have to look for mm -hmm. common ground and not just shine it on. Yeah, the best procedure is actually to have a, you know, like a policy in place. So you know if this kind of situation occurs, what are the steps you're supposed to take under the law? So that, and then you follow the procedure to uh, uniformly enforce it instead of, you know, oh, this individual case, you know, I do it on this, like the other one, it could be a different standard, then you are subject to selective enforcement or dis unfair discrimination issues, and that's where you could get into trouble. Yeah, this question kind of came up uh, in a different way at the Citizens Police Academy I've been attending, because I did find out that uh, Police officers do get calls about the marijuana smoke, and they will come, mm -hmm. and they will ask to see the medical marijuana card, and I'll make sure that they have one that's still valid, not expired. Mm -hmm. And they'll also, if they have plants that are growing, they'll make sure they don't exceed the number and that they're duly uh, marked. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's some marking requirement if you have those in your home um, uh, for those plants. and. Uh, so that's another alternative if if you don't want to make a scene and you want someone to check it out. But on the other side, if you know that person has a medical marijuana card, that's probably not a good idea to call the police because they're not going to be able to do anything mm -hmm. with respect to that. So we're kind of getting to the end of the show real quick. What are the big risks if you don't do this right? Yeah, you could be subject to <coughs> fair housing claims, you know, filed with the HCRC. You could also subject to liabilities arising from, uh, you know, lawsuits and other challenges. And, you know, I noticed this about all attorneys. So, so your advice is probably when you have this issue, consult with your attorney. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I have to say to our uh, viewing audience that, you know, this is not clear. There's a lot of gray areas on that. but. Looking at the issue objectively, establishing some written protocol or policies on how you'll handle the matter, realizing you do have the right uh, to ask for proof that uh, they have a medical marijuana card. You, you do have a right to uh, suggest they use a filter or ingest it mm -hmm. if the, we call it noxious odor. Cause that could be incense, by the way, or things along that line. Uh, that interfere with the well-being and the quiet enjoyment of the other residents are all part of the program, but it's such a gray area and somewhat a new area, mm -hmm. I would recommend, reluctantly I recommend, contact your lawyer, but if you're contacting Nalana, it's okay. <laughs> you know, she's, she's special. She's, you know, she does my show often, and I appreciate her courtesy. So thank you for being on the show, and we thank appreciate you. the discussion of cannabis. I'll use the official name. And we want to thank all of you for watching Condo Insider this week. Next week, we're going to have the fire chief. And he's going to talk about the new sprinkler law and all the newest resolution before the city council, kind of after we thought we had this resolved, saying that the fire department is, is cheating on the agreed upon resolution. But we'll get into that next week with my co-host, uh, Jane Sugimura. Tune in next Thursday, 3 o'clock. Jane Sugimura and our fire chief. Aloha.